Hi guys and welcome back to Crafty Quilting Designs. I hope you're well and having a really great day. Welcome those of you who are new here. You are going to have so much fun making this star sample quilt along. If it's the first time you are actually here or if you're here just for the quilt along, that's very naughty. You should have been here before. <laughs> nevertheless guys welcome I'm so happy to have you on board and for those of you who are stuck with me throughout it you are just fantastic people you really really are always remember that okay right let's get into this let me give you all the brief details so that you know exactly what you need to do first of all all the details will be in the description box down below okay and um, I'm not gonna put a link to the pattern just yet I'll leave that till right to the end because I write the pattern as we go and so but all the details will be in the description box down below any questions you have please 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 do not hesitate to contact me i will answer you back i'm very good at things like that it's a teacher in me i have to respond i cannot leave it alone <laughs> i've got to get a little mark and it's like no you need to do this you need to do this. so just bear with me but i will respond okay um what else can i say to you there is also a template that you would need to download as well do not change the size of the template okay you shouldn't have any problems downloading but again if you do just give me a contact and i can email you one quite easily if that's if it's a download problem all right i'll put my email address also in the description box down below so you're easy to find it it's a beautiful blog I have used really lovely colors and again you can play around with your colors and then or you can choose colors suitable to mine or you can take guidance from the colors that I've actually chosen but nevertheless as long as everything is contrasting you will be fine okay and um, I think the video is quite detailed a lot I did take my time and go through it slowly I did repeat some stuff so bear with me again it's a teacher in me it's about my repetitive teaching style just to make sure that the method is understood um, what else can I say about it just have fun guys it really is or oh, one more important thing if you don't mind guys can you please watch through the ads so that I can be able to make more videos like this if you can help me to do that that would be fantastic by watching through the ads you'd simply allow me to get a small commission from um, YouTube so I can buy more fabrics etc and actually buy more equipment okay because I do not have all of my equipment with me they're all stashed away on a boat still which I'm not very happy about about anyway and they keep delaying the time it's gonna get here I digress I'm calming down you know when you want your equipment you know okay I'm still getting on I'll, I'll jump back for those of you who don't know I recently moved to Australia and um, all of my equipment my sewing machine my baby I hope she's fine she's actually on her way here but they've been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed before they actually get here. But nevertheless, so if you can help me to do that, that will be fantastic. So once again, if you can watch through the ad throughout the whole of the video, as well as the whole um, quilt along uh, once we've completed the quilts. Okay, um, I think that's about it, guys. And um, so, yeah, again, question, give me a holla, give me a holla. <laughs> I'm so silly but nevertheless guys love you have a great fun time with the center block I know you're gonna love it I love it I thought it was really nice I'm sure you saw the thumbnail so um, it's really easy to put together there is no difficulty at all take your time there's no rushing mind your quarter inch seam because you don't want those nice points to be cut off because it's the center block if it's cut off it's very likely some nosy person is going to be like oh your tips are cut off yeah so you know if that happens just tell them that is my invention and that is the way it's supposed to be they say just your creativity coming out all right it's just ignore them okay bye guys so love you have a good time with it happy quilting bye for now see you next week oh and don't forget to give me a thumbs up <laughs> All right guys, so to make the center block, we're obviously going to be starting with our fat quarters. Now, before we start cutting, there's a few things I just want to make you aware. So I have my fat quarters here, so obviously you can see, I've just taken them out of the package and um, just opened them up and have a good look at them. 
okay now they're very rough in the sense that they need ironing they're very crinkly because they have been packed for quite a long time so it's very important that we iron it out and um, before we start cutting now I'm not going to iron all of them at this point I'm only going to iron what I actually need to make the center block all right so I'm going to take a couple out which I've already selected and um, I haven't I've only ironed this one but not this one okay now the importance of ironing is because we want to get rid of all these creases here okay and sometimes we don't want that to be in the cut in the sense that we want the fabric to lay really flat on the cutting mat before we start cutting now another thing to be mindful of before we start cutting as with when you're cutting down into your pieces for your piecing we need to make sure we cut on the right grain now with fat quarters it usually comes as a rectangle okay so that's your rectangular shape you have a longer end and a shorter side all right so um we need to cut from the salvage and in this case the salvage is on the shorter side of this fat quarter and if you've ever forgotten and you wondered well where is the salvage now usually we can identify the salvage by it being white and um, it has lots of writing on it it has lots of dots of different colors and those are usually information about the fabric where it was produced what the name of the fabric is what color it comes in etc okay so um so if you haven't got that like this one here you cannot see what it is all right sometimes you can also identify the um, salvage by lots of little dots on the end of the fabric okay now i'm saying this because many of you may already know this but not everyone does okay because there are a few people who are um new to quilting so sometimes just a little reminder is important and i'm very much the the teacher within me that i have to give the basics so that you understand where you're going with it okay now if you're informed then you can obviously make informed decisions so that's one way of identifying or other ways of identifying the salvage or the salvage in this case um now with this one here it doesn't show the all those things that i mentioned so you don't necessarily see all those final dots you don't see the white end to it because usually it's white it's a different material it's a different feel um to the fabric itself and it has all these labelings on it which is sort of information that is relatable to the manufacturer and people like us who actually um, know what, what they actually mean so that if you want to get the same thing we can go back we can take the salvage and go back to uh, the supplier and say well have you got this if we've used all of it so that's what the information is all about it's just that communication so that it's easier to keep sort of a record of what you have in stock what's been sold what's been used what you can buy again and what you can reorder or what's end of line so those are the sort of thing and what are the colors it actually comes in all right now this one doesn't have those information it just got the edge now you can actually feel there's a little difference to it it feels a little bit more stiffer a little bit more rougher than the edges now give it that um, batiks which is what these are do have a lot of more dye in it so it does change the composition of the fabric itself all right so just bear that in mind if you are also using batiks now the important thing here is to cut opposite that salvage okay so when i say opposite i mean where it is okay i don't want to cut on this side because that is the wrong side for cutting that is a stretchy side there okay that side if we cut our stars on this side so if we cut the fabric let me just roll this up so you can get an idea if we cut the fabric the longer way there it is going to be incorrect in the sense that the uh, blocks wouldn't sit together nicely they'll all be a little bit stretchy and it will come out the wrong size and you may not think it will happen but trust me it will because it happened to me when I'm not concentrating and I had to do the whole thing all over again because immediately I was like oh no I cut the wrong grain all right now so we need the shorter side so longer side for a rectangle on your fat quarters and shorter side which is where the salvage is and sometimes it's removed and sometimes it isn't depending on what sort of collection of fat quarters you actually buy 
Now, one way to remember that or to remember where the salvage is, is to just do a little test. And my, I learned this from my mum. I wonder when she used to go to the fabric store or when she was going to make a dress. Because my mum did a lot of dressmaking for us. I remember her cutting up her wedding dress and making shorts and, and dresses and little, you know, all sort of things she took us. <laughs> She got her wedding dress up and make little stuff for us. But I also remember her doing this to the fabric. I would think, what on earth is she doing? Until one day I decided to ask. And the answer remained with me. And what she was checking for is to ensure, because when you have a larger piece of fabric, sometimes it's easier to tell somebody, it, it, sometimes it isn't. So she used to be just doing that. And what she's listening for is that sharp sound, that bounce back of the fabric. And if you listen to it, you can hear it. Okay? Even when she go to a fabric store, they will do that sometimes. But when you, if you do it on this side, it doesn't make it. You hear the difference? It's difference there. Okay. Also in middle here, if I pull this, it stretches a lot more easily. So if I ever at any time you cannot remember, oh my God, where is the short grain on this? All right. Where is the short grain? Where is the correct grain for me to actually cut? Just do that test. Okay, and you will know that that's where you're supposed to be cutting from. All right, now we are going to cut this up and I'm going to cut mines in the sense that I have lights and darks here playing with that variation of color to make my center star. Now, let me show you what I've done so far. So just before I move on, when you do go to cut, you can, I will cut just one, don't put it together and cut it. If you, that's not what you're aiming for. If you're cutting two or three different types of fabric. So let's say for example, you are um, variating your star colors to light greens, darks, light greens, darks, and you want to cut two or three let sets of lights and greens together, then you can layer your fat quarters with the shorter side of the rectangle in this way and then put it on your mat and start cutting now before you start cutting make sure that your edge here for your fresh cut is lovely and sharp and clean and tidy up you don't want it jagged okay so just make sure those little basic things are done so you iron check you're cutting on the right grain line it up on the cutting mat and cut all right, so I'm gonna put that to the side and bring in what I have already prepared. I'm gonna put it this way so it comes into the camera shot. Now we are going to cut our background fabric for our center block at the same time as us cutting um, the fabric for the um, stars. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to put this to the side for now, and I've already labeled them, which I'll come back and tell you what those labels actually mean. I'm going to put that to the side for now. Now, we're going to be working with this one here. Now, this size is, right, so five and a quarter. So this is a five and a quarter strip. So taking your fat quarter, you are going to cut on the shorter side, okay, on the shorter side, five and a quarter strip okay now once you've done that this is when we start to cut into our diamonds okay so I'm going to bring one in and show it to you here okay so this is what we will be cutting into all right so we're going to make some diamonds we need eight of these and so now now what we need to do is to cut the templates out so once you've done that Make sure that you cut, when you're cutting it out, that is, um, you cut on that stitch line there, okay? Now that stitch line is your cutting line, okay? Because I do not want you to cut it on this line here, not on the solid line, because that is literally going to be the size of the diamond, because this is our quarter inch here, all right? Now you're going to put it down on, because it fits on there nicely right on there you don't have to bring it too close to the edge which mines isn't to be honest even though it may look like that on the camera but it isn't and you're just going to fit it on there now you can do two things you can take some sellotape and glue it down there so it don't move or you can put a little bit of sellotape at the back and just stick it down there i wouldn't advise you to use any glue or anything like that because we don't want that there on the fabric to to gum it up in any way shape or form all right um so you can do that or you can just hold it down 
or if you've got a spinning mat um, ideal for this particular one all right so um, what I'm going to do is use my smaller ruler and just let's simply cut it to size now so line it up and one of the things that you can check that you're doing it correctly is that you will literally see your quarter inch from the edge to the actual solid line there okay so I'm just going to line it up and trim it off so that looks fine so that tells me I've got a little tiny bit of space at the bottom there but I'm not going to worry about that okay so I'm going to start in the corner here so I line it up I check that everything was okay and I'm just going to cut so I am putting my ruler on top of the paper so that it doesn't shift okay very important just to be mindful of that now when you are cutting you, it's also very important that you line up the edge of the ruler to the edge of the paper of your template do not go on top of the paper like that because then you will eventually reduce the size of your um template okay so make sure it is lined up edge to edge and as i said before you should see that line there i'm just pick this up you can see there that line there from the edge of the ruler is literally your quarter inch i'm going to put it back down just making sure it's all lined up properly and i know that i am not now going to cut into my paper because i'm definitely putting it on the solid line there okay and I'm just going to cut. Now you need a lovely sharp blade to do this because obviously you'll be doing lots of cuts. All right. Okay. So then you need to lift it up and try not to move it. So the reason why I actually mentioned the sellotape because when I cut before I did notice it did kind of move. Even if it has, it is not a problem. Why? Because this is the size of the template. So all you need to do is just put it back. So don't make a big deal about it. Okay. Now, if you have a, a turning mat, you can then maneuver the mat to turn rather than you shift your body. But I am not cutting on that. So I'm going to move my body in this case. I'm going to lay it down, measure it all up, making sure it's all lined up properly. Now, if you've also got a longer ruler, you can. This is a six and a half inch ruler here, and this is fine because the actual um, strip is five and three quarters or five and a quarter, so it's more than enough for the ruler to lay on top of it nicely. Okay, and just take your time and cut, hold it down firmly. Put the blade I usually notch the blade against the edge of the ruler sometimes I come back and then go forward and cut okay and that is your diamond there so as I said you need eight so I'm going to do another one you should be able to get two from there quite nicely so in this case what you would do now is to nudge that right into you just fit it in basically into that space now I wouldn't I wouldn't bring it down you can if you want to make a fresh cut but in my eyes you are just wasting the fabric and um, fabric is really expensive as we all know I wouldn't want to do that okay so these are now scraps and don't throw these away I've already have an idea of what we're going to do with those so don't don't chuck those away I'm very much a, a stingy fabric person I hate wasting the fabric in fact I hate wasting anything okay so um, line it all up make sure it's notched up there nicely and what I'm going to do now is simply and you can also use those points there to match just to make sure you're on the right track and what I'm going to do now is just do one cut over there line up that quarter inch line on the ruler with a quarter inch line on the template and just simply just cut it just as I did before Okay, so remember, you're going to keep those. All right, 
so that's our second piece completed and again keep those don't chuck them away so we need eight of those and I know I'm repeating myself but again that's just the way I teach because I like to ensure that everyone knows exactly what needs to take place now let's move on to this fabric now now I have chosen black for my background fabric because my colors are quite vibrant I could have chosen any other color it doesn't really matter to be honest um, as long as the contrast is there and when I talk about the contrast the contrasting here is allowing that pattern we don't want to go through doing all of this beautiful stars fade to be lost within the background fabric we don't want that we want that when anyone looks at our quilt we're like oh my god those stars are beautiful look at the points you can visually see them just standing out they're so prominent so hence the reason why I have chosen black okay so whatever background color you choose just make sure that all of the colors are contrasting really well okay to so just check that all right <coughs> okay so we're going to work with the smaller strip first and again I have cut as I explained before from the salvage and this is a longer strip is just folded in half I'm going to turn it on this side because I'm right-handed now this strip is five and a quarter and I'm going to cut it into five and a quarter squares all right so um, again I'm going to start with a clean cut here so I'm going to take that extra bit off at the end because I don't want to play around with that and try to get it all straight and move it around on the mat so just cut it off it is only a very small amount of fabric so just cut it off trust me it saves so much more easier time and I'm going to count now this is my habit I always count even though I know where it's gonna fall I'm gonna I'm gonna count because I don't want to waste the fabric and I don't want to just waste my time okay so one two three four five and I need a quarter and I'm gonna do it again one two three four five and a quarter I'm gonna line it up there and at the bottom and I'm notice I've changed to my longer ruler because I want to be able to see the markings at the top and the markings at the bottom so hence the reason why I've, I've switched to this longer ruler now so five and a quarter at the top and at the bottom and and then I'm going to cut so we need four of these <coughs> so that is one so that's a quarter there I'm move it down to the end I'm gonna line it up again make sure it's nice and straight now I didn't have to move it but that's just my way of doing stuff because I just want to make sure I don't miscount or misread or anything like that because I am wearing glasses and sometimes my eyes gives problems with the grid lines so I like to move it because then I have a mental marking the visual marking so one two three four five and a quarter there again line it up at the bottom so it's lovely and straight and I'm gonna count again one two three four five quarter all right so it's nothing wrong with counting it just means that you don't want to waste your time and waste the fabric because obviously the background fabric is also going to be used throughout the entire quilt right so now we need to cut these into triangles and I have twos here you can stack them all up as fours and do it but I'm not gonna worry about that I'm just gonna cut it and make a triangle so one of the um, great things about um, building this particular star is that there is no Y seam so don't worry about that hence the reason why we're doing it in this way I don't know why people don't like Y seams it doesn't really bother me to be honest I find them quite easy to do um, to be honest so not a major problem for me but I know some people feel a little bit threatened by them okay my ethos is if it goes wrong I just do it again until I get it right now we're going to do the same thing with um, this one here and the size of this one is six and three quarters so my strip 
is six and three quarters and I am going to cut into six and three quarters square and I'm going All right guys, so let's start to lay the blocks out. So I have my six and three quarters here, which is eight in total. And I got my five and a quarter here, and these are also eight in total. All right guys, so I have all of my pieces here now. So one thing you can do is just line them all up and to just check that they're all the same size, okay, just before you move on. So I'm just gonna Put these at the top here so that it's easier for me to reach and i want to make sure that you can actually see what i'm doing so i'm just going to move my mat a little bit i'm going to move my cuts out of the way now all i'm going to do literally is to lay my diamonds out and to find the right color that makes me happy so i'm going to start like this i'm just going to lay them out for now and then i will most likely move them around all right guys so i have laid it all out so that you can see it a lot more clearly now we're going to add our background fabric on now so that it raises the profile of the stars now when you lay yours out you can lay them out into your color formation of your lights darks medium etc or whatever color pattern you're actually using and notice i say color pattern okay all right so obviously we want the fabrics to contrast as i said originally with your background fabrics so we're going to go in with the um, triangles now we're going to start with the smaller triangles we do not want to start with the larger triangles i repeat that we are starting with the smaller triangles and i'm going to identify them as um triangles a all right so what you're aiming at is to put the longer side together Okay, longer side together so that we are creating a seam line all the way through and we're going at the four junctions here so one two three four to add those smaller triangles again we're going to go in from that way and again we're going to turn it so that we create that seam line and, and I know you've noticed that it's bigger and that is correct all right we're just giving ourselves a little allowance here so that there is no area for error all right so we don't make any mistake and um everything lines up beautifully so i'm going to turn it back in its rightful place and again what we want to do is create that seam line down the middle there okay and that's really important okay to, to, in order to have that seam line so we do not end up with any Y seams and that's what we're trying to eliminate here by simply uh, laying it out in this way okay so that is correct so far as I said if it's a bit sticking out at the end there don't worry about that that is perfectly normal so now we're going to go in with the larger triangles and I'm going to refer to them as triangles um, B so I'm just going to slide that one in there okay and i'm going to slide this one in there and what i want you to pay a close attention to is that we are simply creating another seam line there okay so we have a first seam line there and our second seam line there and that's what we're doing so that it's easier to join them together so i'm going to do the same thing again so remember we want that seam line in the middle so when i pick it up i'm going to make sure it fits in like so and again we want those longer edges of those triangles to be kissing each other and that's the way i remember these things you know oh the, the lips are meeting there you go 
they're kissing each other all right and you, you got to find something that enables you not to make a mistake and when you do that trust me life is easier <laughs> life is easier because then you do not have the opportunity then to make any errors okay remember again you want that seam line going and notice that i'm spinning it around you know check yourself if it's like that then you don't have that seam line there then no it's incorrect just keep moving it until you find it there you go yeah you have your seam line there and i'm saying a seam line because that is what it's going to be it is going to be a seam line and there you go those two fabrics are meeting and kissing each other okay and what we've done here is just eliminate the process of actually creating any Y scenes for ourselves. So that is what it looks like. Now we need to talk about how we're going to sew it together. Okay, now if you look at it carefully, this is going to be formed in groups of four. So you have one, two, three, four blocks basically here. Now if I were to slightly put it apart, let's see if I can do it without making much of a mess. That is not too bad, not too bad at all. And it's one block, two block, number three and number four okay so now we need to just work out how we're actually going to sew this together now we're going to sew it together again starting with the a block okay so a block is the starting block when it comes for these triangles these triangles block a is what we're starting with so we are going to sew it front size together so what i want is my peaks here i'm going to move up to another one where you can actually see because you can't see where i'm referring to so i'm going to find one that's excellent in the camera shot and i think i'm going to go with this one over here let me just move smoosh these down a little bit So what I want is my points to line up in order to sew it together. So I want these two points here to line up. So when I sew it together, so when I flip front sides together, I want it like so. And again, that is correct because we are going to trim that off at some point. Okay, so we're going to do our normal quarter inch on that line there and we're going to do the same for the next one so it needs to look the same so i need to make sure that my points looks the same so it match up on that side there all right guys so let's sew on the a triangle to the diamond and remember we are lining up the points at the top here okay so you're folding it over Now you can pin if that makes you feel a lot more confident. What you're aiming for is to line up, I'm going to separate these, raw edge and raw edge there. Okay, remember this bit sticking out here is acceptable. All right, so I'm going to put it on there, aiming for a quarter inch seam. And what I am doing is literally starting off the edge there where it tips off, okay? I'm just lining it up properly. Now you can pin, if not, if you feel that you're okay with it, by all means just continue. You just take your time, and go all the way down, continuously checking that you are literally holding those two fabrics together and that you are going to stitch those two fabrics together because remember we're starting on that little peak edge there so I just want to make sure that it's actually catching and I'm not just sewing the black fabric only so I'm just lining it up properly and holding it and come all the way down and just checking again fabric moves so hence the reason why you should pin but I feel happy with it as it is I'm right, going to take that off I drop my scissors so I'll put that one there back in its rightful place 
and I'm going to do um, the other side as well so before I do that I'm going to fold it back open all right a little finger press and I'm turning the fabric to the lighter side in this case because it's boutiques but I'm not going to see anything so I'm just going to finger press that the next one now now just line it all up before you start again just so that you know you have everything correct all right and I'm going to line up this edge now the top here and I'm calling it the top so that I get that nice straight edge fold it over line it up properly take your time no rushing I'm just holding it at the end just to ensure I have both fabrics together and I'm just sewing my quarter inch And again, I like to clip all of the threads off so um, I don't have to worry about it towards the end. I'm not going to worry about trimming at the moment. I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay, I put this back in its rightful place. All right, so, so what you're aiming at is to have these two dog ears, and I'm going to hold it up. Two dog ears sticking out there and there. All right. So I put that one to the side. I'm going to work on this one now. So in my hands here, I have the B fabric, okay, and my diamond. So I'm going to get my A fabric and put it together. Okay, so remember you're forming that block there okay and the same applies so I'm going to put on the A fabric first and again I'm going to line up the point there I'm going to move that one to the side so it doesn't confuse you line up the points there together so front sides together and I like to sew with the um, the background fabric on top so I can see it quite clearly whatever works for you um, it's really down to you it doesn't really matter which side you sew first in this particular instance anyway and I've just unthreaded my needle again well in this case I'm going to turn it over so I can start on that edge yet again but again either side it doesn't really matter as long as you achieve that quarter inch seam You can press it but I'm just gonna finger press for the moment all right so remember in this case here we want these fabrics here to line up that's the most important thing don't do it like that because it should look exactly as the first one that you've made so fabrics at the end there okay one way to remember it as I said is to have these two sort of peaks sticking out at the end then I'll bring it to shot so you can see so these two peaks sticking out at the end so again front sides together line it up whatever side you are confident 
in stitching it down but probably it's best to start on the side that sticks out so you could at least adjust your quarter inch and make sure it's correct by the time you get onto the actual fabric itself and in this case I'm referring to the diamond again pin if you feel confident doing that and I like to hold the fabric at the end just to make sure that it's it's secured there and I have both fabrics together Once you finish, you should have two of the same that looks exactly the same. Okay, so we are literally beginning to form our um, stars within with this diamond and including the background fabric. So I'm going to iron these now. Now I'm going to start at the back first. Now, it may seem as though I'm not concerned as to which diamond I'm working with, but trust me, I am. I know this one is the first one I did, okay? Because I want to put my diamond back in the same place that I actually got it. Now, I am just literally setting the seams here. I am not ironing the fabric. I'm just really setting the seams because I want those seams to remain intact. Really? All right, guys, so um, let's... Let me show you how to trim this now. So um, I'm gonna put that aside. Now, very important, so you must have both of your triangles. In this case, I'm calling them a triangle because that's what we've created. A triangle with a bit of diamond sticking out, all right? They must look the same. If they look different, then something has gone wrong somewhere. Now we're going to cut this. Now there are several ways you can do this. If you've got um, a ruler uh, uh, that is a, a square that's got that a 60 degree so that angle going from point to point you can use that I haven't got that today with me okay all of my supplies are still um, I should say traveling however um, I'm going to use my ordinary long ruler which you can use and I'm going to use that 60 degree line on the mat which is going to be helpful so it's good to be able to use the mat a lot of people just use the mat just for cutting but you've got all those lines as well on the mat that you can use okay I haven't pressed the unit as, as yet all I've done is set the seams just so that once I go to cut it can lay nice and flat now using that 60 degree line on the actual mat here I'm going to line up my diamond why the diamond because the diamond has got the accurate cut remember the B and A triangles have been cut larger for allowance so that we don't make any mistake and even if we make a cutting error you know we've got room to play with all right so I'm going to line up the diamond on that that longest line going right from point to point on your um, mat now you could use an ordinary grid line it's fine too really is fine too the most important thing is that you line up the actual diamond okay so I'm going to line up the diamond and anything else that's sticking off beyond that line even if the black fabric goes over slightly I am going to trim it it's very important you trim it accurately so I'm just going to line it up okay making sure that my ruler extends from my um, from my unit here the ruler extends beyond it and I'm literally seeing that line at the top it's gonna to slide it down so that you can see and the same at the bottom and just line it up making sure that the line is straight on that diamond and then line it up at the top there and I can see I've got a little tiny little bit on this particular one to trim and I'm just going to trim it off to make sure that's nice and straight Now 
another line before I forget you want to make sure line up as well is one of the lines on the grid line here and at the bottom here again you're using the triangle so let's make sure that triangle is lined up straight at the bottom don't worry about the background fabric is the diamond cut that we're aiming to measure up here at the bottom and at that 60 degree there okay and making sure because we have sewn this nice and straight so that should be lined up properly again I'm going to put it on top line it up at the end and I can see it just got a little bit sticking out at the top I'm going to move the camera so you can see exactly what I'm referring to all right so looking closely now you can see my line there what is sticking out if you come all the way down all the way down you can see my diamond has lined up properly and I'm working with this line here hopefully it's very faint on my board you can see it there that goes all the way through right to the top up there okay so I'm gonna line it back up again making sure it's lined up at the end there and it's on the line sticking out hence the reason why I want the ruler going beyond the B fabric this is the B fabric because it's the bigger one okay line it all up once that's done then I'm going to cut and I should have a lovely straight cut there okay I'm going to do also the same for the bottom so if you look there you can see the diamond actually lining up on that bottom grid line there so when I put my ruler here on this edge all of this is going to be off all right so I'm gonna do that now all right here we go so lining it all up again making sure everything is good and I'm going to cut and notice I'm not cutting from the diamond because there's nothing to cut I'm literally going to start to cut from the B fabric from the dark fabric from the background fabric all right and just trim off that extra bit and that is what I am working with there all right dog ears as well has been removed okay you got that lovely straight line so I'm gonna do the same not gonna even move it I'm gonna same line it out up there on that line and I'm going to again not cut from this bit at the bottom here but the diamonds because it really isn't anything and just cut along there right so that's that all I'm going to do on this side is just simply trim off the dog ears that's it all right so that's your perfect triangle with your diamond cut in the middle there and I'm going to do the same for this one just gonna open up that seam I can see it's slightly full there And that's important make sure that there's no folds in your fabric on your seam you want that to lay really lovely and flat so just pay attention to those little things okay that's fine again the same I'm going to line it up using the point of my diamond And that 60 degree line right across the middle line it up and trim off the excess same thing on this side again lining up the diamond and just trimming off the excess and on this side I'm just going to turn it and trim off the excess on this side also again that includes now before I cut this just be mindful of your points there you don't want to cut that off please please do not cut that off just be careful if you notice on this one as well my point is intact you shouldn't be cutting where those lines meet you should not be cutting there if you do that you will be chopping off your point and it's going to look like that flat okay so we want that X where the and um, thread actually crosses over we want that to remain intact because that is where we're going to sew to sew through once we join all of these units together all 
All right, so I've got these two sorted now. So all that's left to do is basically to sew your units together, line them up. I like to clean away any threads. I just find it makes it look so untidy as you go along. Okay, and just line it up. Now, important here, you definitely need a pin for this one, okay? So all I'm going to do is to fold my two units together. I am not worried about whether they meet at the end here. My most important thing is making sure my diamonds meet in the middle there. So what I'm going to do is the normal old trick that most quilters use is to go through one of the units and I'm going to find, I'm going to go through that seam. In fact, let me open up the seam. It will probably be the easiest to do it rather than do it on the side. I tend to do it on the side sometimes. So I'm going to open up the seam if I can get it. So there I've opened up the seam there and I'm going to go right through that seam and I'm going to find the other one. I'm going to go right through again. And before I do anything, I'm just going to make sure it all lines up properly. It's edge to edge. Even if it is, I'm going to, if it's not, I'm going to adjust it because this is the point where you need to just make sure everything lines up properly. And I've pulled my pin out because I've kind of stuck it in short. So I'll put it back in. And I'm just going to just put it nice and flat come back right throughout that seam and pull it down because I am going to release obviously remove the pin once I'm done I'm gonna try and take a peek and see if it's lined up properly that looks all right it's a little bit crimple where I've kind of been heavy-handed where I've pinned it but that lines up fine there I'll just show it to you it lines up fine there so I'm going to fold that back over neaten this up line it properly and I'm just going to do my quarter inch seam and as I sew I'm just going to remove the pins so I'm just going to pull it down slightly so that area smooths out there we go let's go and sew now and that's the way I'm going to do all of the blocks We'll be making it into a square once we've done. Take your time here, don't rush. As I'm getting close, I'm just going to remove my pin and just hold it in place so it doesn't move. I'm just going to adjust down here and just make sure it's good. I can see that. Now, this area here is biased, especially on that B fabric. Do not pull or stretch in it, please. Just take your time. Let the machine do the work. That's what the feed dogs are for. Let it pull that fabric through don't rush it it's only one big star so we want that star to shine right let's see if my if my sewing is good <laughs> and guys even if the points don't match up you have two options a unpick it and start again or b leave it alone don't let it stress you out because i tell you once it's all completed and it's quilted those slight imperfections are not important no one sees them okay 
so my joining has been good look at that that's what we're aiming at so just take your time with these points all right so everything matches up nicely so okay guys so i have um sewn all together and what i went ahead and did was to press the seams open for all of the blocks okay so i've just pressed them open nicely so that when it comes to quilting time it's a lot more easier for quilting and the blocks are really lovely and flat so you can go ahead and do that um i don't think i need to show you how to press open seams but just in case just open the seam and press them flat at the back all right now what you need to do now is to just tidy up the edges on the block the block by now should be measured 10 inch and all of them of mine so which you should have four has measured 10 so what i'm going to do literally is just put my ruler down and remove my dog ears and i'm using just one of the grid lines here on the mat and just lining it all up and just literally taking off the dog ears and notice i didn't start all the way down okay so i'm going to have dog ears in two areas just line it up on the grid and then cut so, and bring this into the camera shot now so everything should be nice and even and again your block should be pressed by this point now when i was pressing i did not add any steam at all to mines now i don't usually like to add steam to mines my blocks when i'm actually sewing because i find that the steam can warp it meaning it get out of shape so i don't tend to i add steam i just add a dry iron i would literally add steam probably once the block is finally made a complete block is finally made or the whole quilt top is done is when i'll probably add a little bit of steam to it so please don't don't fuss yourself about that at all okay so now you need to sew together in groups so you can either sew these two together or these two together here or you sew these two or these two it really does not matter at all so whatever is the easiest for you or whatever lines up at this point in time if you feel you want to swap a block around and use it on this angle by all means you can if you find that oh i don't think that my my points are lining up there my points are lined up in the middle you can swap a block around it's entirely down to you depending on the fabrics you use it really should not make a difference at all that's the same with mine if, if regardless of where i place these it really doesn't matter it is still going to use to look very pretty because of the type of fabrics that they are okay so i think i'm happy with this i just moved it and there's lots of yellow on the side and lots of red it does look like a little bit like the sunset so I'm happy with that so I'm just going to sew these two together and I can see my points line up there in the middle nicely there and the same for this one here and for these points in the corner there so those one two three um three four five six seven eight points line up all the way around so I'm just going to fold it over and at this point again um if you do want to pin by all means you can but I don't think I am going to bother because I can see everything lines up already. The block size are the same. So I'm just going to line it up together there and just literally hold it and sew it.
all right so for the last um, fabric that you need you need a 15 inch square and you need to get that from two fat quarters all right I have used this particular print twice so obviously I'm using a 16 bundle or if you want you can simply buy two fat quarters of the same kind all right so that way you will end up getting two of the prints all right so cut your square into 15 inch and then cut it from point to point so what we are going to do is to set our diamond star on point so you're going to do this twice so you should have four once completed just take your time if you're not confident with cutting and go all the way through just making sure your blade is lovely and sharp all right and that's it so what we're going to do now and I'm just going to do a brief example so you're gonna put your block down and just before I move on I think your block should come up at 19 inches square yes so your diamond star block should come up at 19 inches square all right so and all you're going to do basically is to put all of your triangles now around the square like so so you should have a very big square around your block and that's it and we're just going to sew it together and then it will be um, on point so I'm going to sew this together and I'll show you the final product now the easiest way to sew this together is to find the middle point of each of the triangles so I'm just going to leave one down as an example so I'm going to fold the triangle in half I'm just going to um, finger press the middle there now I already know the middle of my block because I have a seam line running all the way down so I'm just going to open it up match that creased area to there fold it over and just sew it across all right and I'm going to do that for all of them okay so I would say do top and bottom first then add the sides all right so I'll show you that in a sec all right guys so this is what the block looks like it has come together very beautifully look at that all of the colors contrast very nicely so these are the things I want you to pay attention to so just be careful with your color contrasting another thing I want you to be careful about is your points on the corner here notice mine isn't cut off you need to leave that there okay so again on the top of there, points are intact this highlights the quilt and allows it to show that it's sitting on point so very beautiful very easy in my eyes nothing too stressful you know just take your time I would say watch the video first before you actually start cutting and sewing so you know exactly what you're doing it just allows you to understand it over and over again okay so guys I hope you enjoyed the first block your center block for the quilt and this is this is it for now we're going to stop here anything else added on we will continue when that time actually comes and um, but for now this is it for the center block so well done give yourself a pat on the back congrats for getting started okay I hope your colors work out as well and um, as I said any questions that you want to ask by all means ask me I have no problems in answering you okay guys so give the video a thumbs up don't forget to like and subscribe and if you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel and um, if you didn't see the notification definitely get started go get your fabrics and get started on this beautiful quilt so guys bye for now happy quilting I love you all so much be careful out there stay safe God bless bye for now